one sixth of all human beings on earth live in India. The world's largest democracy. A civilized urban society has existed here for almost 4,000 years. India is home to 200 million middle class consumers who drive one of the biggest economies on the planet. Yet far from the hustle and bustle of the city, there exists another India. Nearly 90 million Indian people belong to rural tribes, isolated from 200 years of modernization. As a result, they have little access to education or modern healthcare. Their centuries of experience in tending their fields and livestock is not valued by urban society. This is the story of one tribal community's struggle to survive. At the tribal hospital, a man arrives who has attempted to take his own life by drinking pesticide. Suicide levels among rural Indians are high, but at this hospital they don't just treat the patients that come through the door, they're also trying to improve their lives. In 2006, the Tribal Health Initiative helped almost 15,000 tribal people receive health care. Giving these neglected people this basic right has taken over a decade to achieve. And it's all down to a doctor couple from the city who are inspired by the work of Gandhi. Both of us had this idea of uh, actually trying to work in a place where we were really needed. We were always hospital doctors, you know, hospital-based doctors. We would see patients when they come in, we had no idea of how they lived, what, they, I mean, what their situation was and things like that. Gandhiji also, when he wanted to work, took a train journey actually all over India. So uh, what I did was I, I just took a backpack and just started going from organizations, regions. I just wanted to see what India was like. I had gone to a very remote area where there was no doctor and uh, a person had come who had been bitten by a bear and his, his foot was almost gone and he had walked 20 kilometers to get to the hospital. And that's when I very closely started interacting with tribals and I, I really felt for them that they are the poorest people simply because they have no accessibility to anything, to any, any resources and the governments generally ignore them in spite of the fact that 7% of our population is tribal. They have no political representation and therefore nobody cares about them. The 
desire to help a tribal community led the doctors to the Sitilingi Valley in the Damapuri district of Tamil Nadu. 95% of the population here are tribal. Three hours drive from the nearest city, the valley is home to 40,000 Malayali, or hill people. For hundreds of years, these tribals have relied on shamans or witch doctors for medical help. Then looked around this valley and uh, the medical uh, logistics was very bad. I uh, took up a hut in the village and we just stayed there for four months just to get the hang of the life of how tribal people live. From this mud hut, the doctors began a basic practice. But for it to work, they had to win the trust of the people. This wasn't going to be easy. The tribes had already been visited by men calling themselves doctors. They came from local towns, selling useless or harmful injections. For the Malayali, there was no difference between Reggie and Lalita and the opportunists that had come before them. Not many people used to come to the hospital because they didn't know that you know medicine is a science and you have to study for six years to learn it. The Malayali were dying from easily prevented problems. Dehydration, malnutrition and pneumonia were killing their people. When a large-scale outbreak of gastroenteritis hit the valley, the doctors had an opportunity to prove their worth. One man came in a cycle and said that my wife is not well and all that. So from what he said, no, we didn't know. I didn't know what it was. But I anyway went there and examined and found the, the lady with dehydration and the whole village is watching me. We stayed the whole night there and managed to give a lot of IV fluids in spite of the objection from uh, the people. Then finally managed to save her. And then they realized that these people are you know, slightly different. However far the villages, they used to carry them to us. And all the people who were brought walked back. The whole thing was trying to break uh, thousands of years of tradition. We were also braving the anger of the gods. Uh, because if any natural disaster had happened at that particular time when this whole shift was taking place, then the whole village would have been against us. The doctors were trying to change a community with strong beliefs and ancient healing techniques. They could only do this by talking to the Malayali and discovering what the most serious health issues were. It was discovered that many of the birth techniques practiced by the rural people for thousands of years were potentially lethal. Ignorance and superstition meant that children here faced an uncertain future. It was this that the doctors had to change. <laughs> 